Hello booktube! Today I'll be doing a Friday Reads video. It's actually not yet Friday, but I'm going to film this early because I don't have time on Friday. Um, so, so far this year I have finished one book and I'm in the middle of um, three others. <laughs> and three of these books um, are all gothic thrillers. Why did I do that to myself? Um, I don't, I, I tend to multi-read because I, you know, I'm, I'm listening to a book on audio while I'm driving, but then I want to have a physical book or something to read, whether it's actual physical or an ebook or something um, in addition to that. So uh, I try not to generally pick the same genre because that gets very confusing, particularly if it's like a cozy mystery. Your characters start to kind of blend and it gets a bit of a mess. Uh, but I had started uh, this particular audio book. Uh, this is the first book that I finished for the year, but I started actually at the end of last year. Uh, this is uh, Little Eve by Catriona Ward. Uh, I love the cover. I saw this book at work uh, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and I saw it was available in audio, so I'll just download that. But I love it. it's like the underwater version up on top there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read you the synopsis just to make my life a little bit easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, A heart-pounding tale of faith and family with a devastating twist. Quote, unquote, A great day is upon us. He is coming. The world will be washed away. On the wind-battered isle of Altnahara, off the wildest coast of Scotland, a clan prepares to bring about the end of the world and its imminent rebirth. The adder is coming, and one of their number will inherit its powers. They all want the honor, but young Eve is willing to do anything for the distinction. A reckoning beyond Eve's imagination begins when Chief Inspector Black arrives to investigate a brutal murder, and their sacred ceremony goes terribly wrong, and soon all the secrets of Altnahara will be uncovered. Um, on the island, there's uh, a man um, referred to as Uncle by all the children that are there, and they're all basically orphans that he has brought to live on the island. Uh, and it's it's disturbing. Um, there's definitely trigger warnings for abuse and sexual abuse and murder and yeah, lots of gore and stuff like that. But um, yeah, he's he's described as uncle and he is raising them in this weird cultish kind of community where like the adder will, um, like I said, take over uh, the world and, and one of them will be like controlling all these powers and stuff. And it's very disturbing and dark. The book begins with a rather brutal ceremony. Like they said, it has gone horribly wrong. There's there's death and it's going to bring about the police. And um, it, it really draws you right into the book. Um, it does uh, then kind of backtrack and show you what led up to this particular scene. And then it also goes beyond that scene into the future and what happened since. And there's definitely a surprising twist at the end, but I... I started to see it coming, but it was still interesting how it unfolded. Um, it, it, like I said, it did drag a little bit through the middle, but it was still um, really rich descriptions and, and of the scenery and um, the the island and the surroundings and um, the rituals and all the stuff that goes on. But it, it could be a little bit disturbing with, um, like I said, the trigger warnings and stuff like that. But um, thoroughly thoroughly immersed myself in that. But uh, at the same time, I picked up a ebook. Uh, and this is The Daughters of Block Island by Krista Carmen. And again, it's another gothic thriller. <laughs> so I will read the synopsis to this one too. In this ingenious and subversive twist on the classic gothic novel, the mysterious past of an island mansion lures two sisters into a spider web of scandal, secrets, and murder. Two sisters, strangers since birth yet bound by family secrets, are caught up in a century-old mystery on an isolated island. After arriving on Block Island to find her birth mother, Blake Bronson becomes convinced she's the heroine of a gothic novel, the kind that allowed her intermittent escape from a traumatic childhood. How else to explain the torrential rain, the salt-worn mansion known as Whitehall, and the restless ghosts purported to haunt its halls? But before Blake can discern the novel's ending, she's found dead, murdered in a clawfoot, uh, clawfoot bathtub. The proprietress of Whitehall stands accused. Summoned by a letter sent by Blake before she died, Thalia Mills returns to the island she swore she'd left for good. She finds that Blake wasn't the first to die at Whitehall under suspicious circumstances. Thalia must uncover the real reason for Blake's demise before the forces conspiring to keep Block Island's secrets dead and buried rise up to consume her too. Uh, so this is the one I'm, I'm currently still reading um, on my Kindle. Uh, like I said, it is the story of these two sisters who've never met um, Thalia was actually the older sister, and uh, when Blake was born, for whatever reason, um, her mother gave her up. And that's what Blake, when she finds out about her her uh, birth, goes to um, Block Island to find out, uh, to meet her mother. And um, 
you know, events happen to uh, where suddenly she is murdered. And um, just before she sends those letters to her sister that she finds out about Thalia and explains about her past and, and uh, why she was on the island. And now Thalia has come to kind of confront her mother and find out what happened, what's going on. Um, and it is definitely got a gothic feel to it. Like I said, when, when you're at White Hall, all these um, things like appearances that, that Blake sees of what could be a ghost, um, the weather, it's just everything. She says, I feel like, I feel like I'm in a gothic novel. All the surroundings, all the things happening around her. And you kind of feel that too and stuff. And um, it just, it's really, really good so far. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, when I finished um, Little Eve on audio, I looked for another audio book. And um, this one popped up. <laughs> this is by an author I've read a couple other books for, from her before. This is Laura Purcell, and the book is entitled uh, The House of Whispers. Now, if you look on Goodreads, I've read Silent Companions before, which I really enjoyed. And, um, oh, what was it called now? Where is Brad? Shoot. Oh, I can't remember now. It's got two different names. A couple of her books have like the names have changed. And the one I read was The Poison Thread, but it also has a different name. Um, and now this one, The House of Whispers, is also referred to as Bone China. So Bone China from, I think is a better title based on what I've come across in the story so far than The House of Whispers. Uh, but it is an intriguing story. And I will read you the uh, synopsis. Well, this kind of like cuts it a bit short. Um, consumption has ravaged Louise Pinecroft's family, leaving her and her father alone and heartbroken. But Dr. Pinecroft has plans for a revolutionary experiment. Convinced that sea air, sea air will prove to be the cure his wife and children needed, he arranges to house a group of prisoners suffering from the same disease in the cliffs beneath his new Cornish home. While he devotes himself to the, his controversial medical trials, Louise finds herself increasingly discomfited by the strange tales her new maid tells of the fairies that hunt the land, searching for those they can steal away to their realm. Forty years later, Hester Y. arrives at Morvoren House uh, to take up a position as a nurse to the now partially paralyzed and almost entirely mute Miss Pinecroft. Hester has fled to Cornwall to try and escape her past, but surrounded by superstitious staff enacting bizarre rituals, she soon discovers that her new home may be just as dangerous as her last. Now, the way that describes it, uh, it sounds like it goes in a certain direction, but actually the book starts out with us um, meeting Hester Y. as She is arriving at her new position uh, to care for Louise Pinecroft in her elderly um, state. She's had multiple strokes and is really communicative and can barely move and stuff like that. So it begins at that, that point. And then we kind of, um, through the story, discern a little bit mysterious things about her past uh, and how she came to be there, whether she's telling the truth in terms of her resume. Um, it's, things seem a little bit, you know, questionable about her background. Uh, but then at, at the point I'm at now, which I think I'm about midway through the book now, uh, we've now like flipped storylines and we're following Louise Pinecroft when she's with her father and he's um, experimenting and trying to find a cure for this, you know, for the consumption and stuff like that. So we're down below underneath this home. And uh, so we're meeting the other character as a young girl now. Uh, so it's kind of weird the way the storyline's flipped compared to the way it's described here, but uh, I really enjoy her writing. She's she's very good. The Poison Thread was fantastic. Like I said, Bone China, I think, is a much better title for this book in terms of what you discover about um, uh, Louise Pencroft's maid and um, some of the background of her family that makes China and stuff. And I'm like, oh, all of a sudden, that, that word popped in my head. And before I even remember, before I even looked in Goodreads to see that this was the original title of the book, I'm like, oh, that's why they call it Bone China. So anyway, um, really, really good. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, but I, I wish I wouldn't do that to myself and pick the same genre at the same time in two different books. Uh, it just gets very confusing. So I'm currently listening to House of Whispers by Laura Purcell. And I'm currently reading on ebook The Daughters of Black Island by Krista Carmen. Uh, I'm also, I just picked um, uh, up another book that I just kind of delve into from time to time. I think I'll probably just read a bit, bit more of it, but I was just curious about it. This is a Growing Up Psychic by Chip Coffey. It's a nonfiction book about uh, Chip. He, he says he's the star of A&E's Psychic Kids, Children of the Paranormal. Now, I never saw that show, but I watch a lot of the Travel Channel and a lot of the paranormal shows. I just, I just find it interesting and I don't know, appeals to the horror lover in me, but uh, I've seen him on Kindred Spirits and I really, really like that show. Um, 
So I, I was just curious uh, about his background. And um, so right now I'm still in the uh, introduction part where he's talking about himself as a kid and some things he experienced. And then I guess it goes into, uh, what does it really mean to be psychic? So then it's more like, oh, if your kids happen to have these weird things, this is things you should look out for. But I just really want to just read more about his background. I find that interesting. Um, at the back, there's like a glossary and uh, true tales I never tire of telling. That sounds pretty interesting. Um, there's even like prayers of protection. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, I, I really enjoy watching him on Kindred Spirits and stuff. So I, I kind of picked that up, but just on a whim. Uh, I happened to see that he had a book and I was curious. So that's kind of what I'm reading right now. What are you guys reading? Anything interesting? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.